freak accident during a high school game left the teenager largely paralyzed. Jared Williams is now paralyzed. Jared Williams' life will likely never be the same. A helmet hit the Pinkston High School safety in the neck. Faces a long, painful recovery. Letting the young football player change forever. Change forever. Change forever. I'll never forget first meeting uh, Jared and his mother. When I walked into the room, they were praying, and Jared's mother had her Bible open. I introduced myself, and we sort of talked about Jared's injury uh, and what the prognosis was in very general terms. One of the questions that came up is, what can we expect? And Jared's comment to me was if he could just, just use his arms, he could be an architect and he'd be happy. You know, based on his initial exam, uh, even regaining full arm function would have been uh, hopeful thinking. This was just this real tingly sensation going through my body and I was losing breath and it was kind of hard to breathe and I was in a lot of pain because my neck was hurting. When we went into the room with Jared and he was laying on the gurney, he just had a demeanor of peace in his face and he said to me, um, Miss V, the, the kids call me Miss V, he said, take care of my mom because she worries a lot and I don't need her to worry, I'm gonna be fine. And I said, Jared, I need you to focus on yourself right now, and I promise I will take care of your mom. So here's a child that's laying in, in bed, you know, in pain, thinking about his mom, and then thinking about his future, which to me was pretty amazing. Uh, Jared's injury occurred when he went to make a tackle and took the, sustained the, the force of the blow on the top of his head. Uh, with the position that Jared's neck was in, his bones weren't able to sustain that pressure. That in turn led to what we call a flexion compression injury, where Jared actually sustained a break to this bone. As this bone broke, it forced the bone back into the spinal cord, thereby pinching off the spinal cord. And so you now have a disconnect between what's going on in your head and what's going on in your extremities. When this occurs, we can repair the bones and realign the neck, but at this point in time, we don't have anything to repair or renew those nerves that were damaged at the time of injury. That's when it all just started to, to come to the reality that, you know, that my son is paralyzed. <sighs> he is my firstborn. <laughs> and um, we've been through a lot together. Um, he's seen me cry behind relationships and We've, you know, we've been hungry together, you know, lights have been out, you know, we've sat in the dark together and we just, it's just, we've been through a lot together and it's just, he is, he is, he's my inspiration. And I was hurt, I just didn't even know how to feel or what to feel besides the hurt that this is my son and I can't do anything about it. That's it, that was like, I feel helpless because I can't do anything about my son. I can't wave a wand, I can't, you know, I can't pay a doctor, I can't, nothing. I can't do anything about it, but pray. And that's all I could do. Why did this happen? Why did they have to run that play? Why couldn't they run to the other side? I absolutely love the sport. I've played it since I was three years old, and that's just something that I love to do. I woke up ready to play football, fell asleep playing football. Worst that I thought could ever happen to me on a football field was a broken bone, because I broke my wrist one time playing football, but that was nothing. Even the most mundane tasks of brushing your teeth and getting out of bed or walking to the bathroom, would all be things that Jared would struggle with for the rest of his life, trying to overcome, if he was ever able to overcome them. You know, Jared was out playing a game, making a routine tackle that he's made hundreds, if not thousands of times. Unfortunately, this time, uh, he struck in just the wrong angle, that he had a severe uh, fracture dislocation of his spine, which injured his spinal cord and forever changed his life. When you see a child in that state, you know, you think about your own children and what you have at home. And so you have to, it brings different things into perspective, you know? Everybody, including me, had tears, or sad, 
confused. I mean, we know what the what's next step. But we knew at that time that Jared was gonna be fine. And we just needed to find a way to continue to support him and his family. But spiritually, he was fine. They told me downtown, when you deal with crisis, you should not go on the announcements and, then, and announce the crisis. You're just not supposed to do that. But um, I felt, I don't know what I was feeling, but I made an announcement and I announced that Jared was in surgery and that we all had to pray for him. And I invited anybody that wanted to pray for Jared to come out to the flagpole. And uh, the whole school came out. It was an incredible feeling as a principal to see that my kids had such respect for this family and this child to do what they did. And you know, we're not supposed to do those things in schools. Um, but we did, and it's what we needed. And sometimes we have to do what's needed. That following week, me and the seniors got together at lunch. We talked about just ideas. The kids were telling me that same day, Miss V, we need to raise money. What can we do? One of my friends said we should like write a letter to ESPN, do something, get the news involved and stuff. Maybe we can give them money, you know, maybe we can, you know, put our money together from a job we all had to help pay bills and like that. I kept on telling him, we have to have a purpose for the money. You just can't raise money for the sake of raising money. So at first we were thinking, well, we could pay some hospital bills. Um, well, we can, you know, pay for his therapy. But then we also thought about the way they were living, like the building of the apartment that she was in, the complex and all the problems concerning him for when he comes home. The bills were piling up. I was about to be evicted, you know. Um, it was just a lot. My daughter was being displaced. She was with my best friend and uh, it was just a lot going on. I couldn't work because I had to be there with him. Um, and it was just, I, I had no paycheck. You know, it was just, it was really hard at the time. Very overwhelming. The mom was getting evicted from her home. And literally when she was in the hospital, they came and served a warrant on and taped it to her door saying that she was gonna be evicted in 30 days. She had been in and out of the hospital and she just had lost track of everything in her life, which is understandable. It came with ideas like, maybe we can get a house built. It really wasn't a for sure thought. You know, he was with my friend, he just hollered it out. He was like, he looked at him kind of crazy. He was like, he was like, how can us six guys out of Pinkston High School get a house built? We told Ms. V and she took it to a whole other level that we never thought it would be so big because you know, we thought it was just going to be like, just Pinkston raising money, maybe the neighborhood. The coach came down and he says, you know, what are we going to do? He said, if everybody can give us a dollar. And I was sitting at my desk and I still remember the day there was a couple of people in my office and I said, no, I said, um, everyone's going to give us 24 cents. Because his number was number 24. The kids had started wearing the number 24. The number 24 was all over the building. You know, pray for Jared, number 24. The announcement, don't forget Jared, number 24. And so that number just stuck with me, you know. And so I was thinking, well, if everybody could give me a quarter originally, if everybody could give me a quarter, if I can get, you know, 100,000 kids to give me a quarter, you know, that'd be $25,000, you know, and so it kind of started like that. Well, as we thought about it, you know, and as we talked to Ms. V about it, you know, it came more believable. We're going to raise 24 cents. We're going to get every school child to give us 24 cents, and we're going to build them a home. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but that's what we're going to do. 